Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to take a look at the file generator and how you can use it to work smarter, not harder. Now I've used this once before in my word cloud tutorial, but here I wanted to go into some of the more technical aspects of it, why it's so useful, and also to alert you to some of the issues with it. So let's take a look. So what if I had a lot of text and I wanted each line to appear separately and I didn't want to type hundreds of separate lines and set up hundreds of separate animations? Is there an easy way to automate this so that I could leave work early? That would be pretty cool, right? Well, here's a way that I think you'll like a lot. So for this project, I'm going with 19, 20, 10, 80, 25 frames a second, duration of 20 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is come to Add Object, Generators, Text Generators, and File. And then I'm going to come over to the generator here, and I need to browse for my text file. So there's my text file, and if we have a look at it, you can see that it's cycling through a set of different lines. So let me just explain about the text file. Let's come over and have a look at it. So here we are in text edit. So this is what it looks like. And what I've got is I've got a blank first line, and that's really important with the file generator. For some reason, it requires you to have a blank first line. And so what I've actually got here is 27 lines of text, and that blank first line gives us 28. If I come over to BB edit, BB Edit allows us to, to number the lines. And you can see that the total number of lines, including the blank space, is 28. And that's what we were using for our file generator. You'll notice that each line is just separated by a carriage return. That's all you need to do in order to create a new line. And what you do need to do is let's come over to Text Edit, because this is probably where you're going to make it. So you need to be absolutely sure that you're not in rich text. So if we're in rich text, it looks like this. You can format it, you can give it sort of fancy fonts and whatever. But what we actually need to make sure is that we're in plain text. And plain text looks like this. And another important thing is we need to make sure the file has the .txt suffix. Really important. It has to have a suffix. Can't be RTF, can't be nothing. So back in motion, just want to format it. I'm just going to center it up and scale it up. So you can do whatever you want with this, the, the formatting. I'm just going to go with something basic like this. So to get our animation, what I'm going to do is make a replicator out of this. So object replicate, and I'm going to choose line for the arrangement, and I'm going to zero out these two start and end points. So my text file has got 28 lines, and I'm going to enter 28 for the points there. What I also need to do is to come to my file generator, properties and timing, and set the duration here to 28. So nothing much has changed yet. We need to come back to the replicator. We're going to turn off play frames. We're going to set the source start frame to two, and that's going to skip over that necessary blank first line that we had. And I'm going to set the source frame offset to one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a sequence replicator. Because at the moment, you can see they're all kind of stacked up on top of each other. We don't want that. We want some nice animation. I'm just going to open up the keyframe editor so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to come to the first frame. Let us, first of all, switch the sequencing to from keyframes. And I'm going to add an opacity. And I'm also going to add a scale. I'm going to set keyframes for both of these, like this. I'm going to set my opacity down to zero. My scale, I'm going to set to 150%. Then I'm going to step forward, I don't know, six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to set the opacity up to 100, set the scale to 100. I'm going to move forward a bit. So we're roughly at the point where the next caption is coming in. Again, keyframe the opacity, Let's not bother to keyframe the scale there. And then step forward another one, two, three, four, five, six frames. Set the opacity down to zero. And the scale I'm going to set to 90. Actually, I just want to remove that scale keyframe that I accidentally made there, that one there. So now what happens 
is that we've got our animation. Very, very, very simple. And we're cycling through the text file. We've really easily set up our animation. If we wanted to change the way that animation is working, let's come into the keyframe editor so we can sort of visualize this a little bit more. What if we wanted to actually start at sort of 10% for the scale and end at sort of 150%? We could do that very easily. So I'm just stepping through those keyframes and then we're getting a different animation. Bearing in mind, it doesn't actually matter too much what these keyframes are doing in terms of timing. So if I move them along a lot, it will, for example, make the duration of the fades shorter. But what it won't do is put it out of sync with the playback of the different lines. Whereas if I reduce the range of the animation, it will actually make the fades longer. A little bit hard to understand, but really the position of these keyframes doesn't actually relate to the speed at which the lines are changing. It's, it's kind of an independent thing. So that's one possible use of this, but I want to show you a slightly different one. What if we actually wanted to make this text into a grid? So I'm going to select the rectangle shape here instead. I'm going to set the size to 960 by 540. So you remember that we had 28 items in our file generator. So we need to set the rows and columns to give us 28. And that is, for example, seven by four, isn't it? Four sevens to 28. So to get the effect that we want, we need to set the origin to upper left and the build style to by row. And I'm just going to reduce the scale down to 25% because of what I was doing there. So now you'll see that we've got our text appearing in a kind of grid like this, row by row. So I'm actually going to just quickly draw a rectangle. So just select the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle roughly like this. Just turn off its fill, turn on an outline. And I'm going to duplicate the replicator. Right click duplicate. And I'm going to use the rectangle for the source there. Just want to set the scale of that back to 100%. Turn off the original rectangle there and might just adjust the position of this so it's lining up with our text a little bit more. So now we're getting this. So I don't actually want my rectangle to scale. So I'm just going to remove the scale from that. So it'll just fade on like so not quite matching on the size of our text, but, but you're getting the idea, hopefully. So I've just switched back to my other example just to show you something quite important, which is if we take the sequence replicator and we adjust its length, you'll see that the keyframes there are adjusting as well. We can just basically speed up or slow down the animation. So they're really firing through very fast there, or we could go the other way. And an extremely useful thing to know is that if we make a clone of this replicator, so let's do that, make clone layer, turn off the original, we can actually use any of the retiming behaviors. So retiming, we could just randomly throw in a hold frame here, for example. So it's running and then it just stops because we've added the hold frame. If I hit O to shorten the hold frame, it'll carry on. So really useful to be able to retime using a clone of the replicator. And, you know, there are plenty of retiming options, as I'm sure you well know. And another way of retiming is actually to use the variable speed. It's a little bit more complicated because you end up having to sort of come in to the keyframe editor. So if we actually just drag that down, whatever, we can affect a slowdown there. And then it picks back up again. So what if I wanted to change my text? Imagine I wanted to change this one, for example. So I could come over to text edit and we can look for our line. So loads of text. Let's have instead a lot of text. And then we need to save our file. So I've just saved it there. Now, if we come back over to motion, it's not automatically going to update. You see, it hasn't, it hasn't automatically updated. But what you need to do is to save it, close it, and then reopen it. So I'll quickly do that and come back when that's finished. So here we are, saved and closed, and you can see that that bit of text has been updated. So really easy to 
compile a long list of text in your text editor, edit it, finesse it, make changes, corrections, and not have to worry about trying to enter text in motion. Really handy workflow, I think. So just before we finish, there are a couple of issues I wanted to alert you to in terms of this. The first relates to this sequence replicator. Now, for some reason, if you add a rotation, it doesn't seem to work the way it ought to. So I'm going to keyframe the rotation there and then maybe set it to 360 here or something. You can see down here in the keyframe editor, if I solo that, there's that rotation. But what happens is that although it rotates for the first line, it won't do it for any of the others. So the rotation is not looping. No idea why. So I think it's a bug with this from keyframe sequencing that's not correctly recognizing rotation. So just something to be aware of. So the other point is about the file generator itself. I'm just going to turn off this replicator, turn back on the file. I'm going to extend the project so it's 28 seconds long, so it'll be easier to understand. And I'm going to set my file to be the duration of the project there. As you can see it's now 28 seconds. And I'm just going to drop in very quickly a time code generator so you can actually see the time code very clearly. So often with Apple, timing is a big problem. So I want you to see what happens now when the, the file generator is actually running under its own steam, as it were. So it's playing back the files and it's playing them back very nice and evenly one second at a time. You can probably see that that's of an even rhythm and that's because we've set up our timeline to be 28 seconds long. But what about that start? So you'll notice that the first caption comes in at 13 frames and thereafter it switches over exactly a second later. You can see 113 there, 213. So the captions are indeed cycling at the rate of one second, but that first line, which we've left blank, is actually only half the duration of everything else. So this makes for a real headache if you're trying to use the file generator's own playback system. And this applies whether you use the default speed of constant or you try to fudge it with the custom speed. So anyway, it's obviously a bug. And fortunately, the method that I showed you means that you don't really have to worry too much about that. But do be aware of this if you are actually trying to use this particular function. So anyway, I hope that gives you a useful understanding of this very powerful option. And I very much hope it's going to help you work smarter and get home earlier. So thanks for watching. See you again soon.